there's this black guy who worked for a company called, uh, Turning Point. what is it? Turning Point. Turning Point. Who said that? Oh, Turning Point. <laughs> And I saw this guy on Tucker show one day. I just happened to have an on, and he was interviewing the guy. The guy sounded very conservative about issues, right? And um, oh, one of the politicians said that if he become president, he's going to take away the uh, nonprofit status for churches, and that because if you don't marry a, those people, the same folks, you can't have a nonprofit status. And so this black guy was talking to Tucker about that and other issues. And out of nowhere, he said, I'm a homosexual. I'm like, you are? I haven't seen him before. I didn't know he was homosexual. It never crossed my mind he was, right? And then he said he had a husband. He said, Man, I have a husband. I'm like, black people don't say they have a husband. <laughs> Not black men on TV, right? I was stunned this man said he had a husband. I ain't never heard a black man say he had a husband. It was shocking that he had a husband. And Tucker looked like his eyebrows, he, he didn't respond, right? And, and the guy said that he had a husband. So he's not for this politician taking away the right not to marry gay people, but because he has a husband and he's not for it. Then he said he'd been in the military. And I'm wondering, did your husband go too? Do they let husbands go to the military with husbands? And so I'm thinking, this is so crazy. He's going to be put out of the black world. I never heard, have anybody ever heard a black man say he had a husband? Right? I never heard that before. And then he said he was a conservative, right? And so I tweeted out there, you can't be a conservative. You can't be a Christian. He said no such thing as being Christian and being conservative. Right. No such thing as a gay Christian and gay conservative, right? And all hell broke loose. It, it really did. And so I'm thinking, now the millennials, they don't know that you can't, conservatism is an anti-homosexual. They don't hate them, but they don't accept it as a norm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I became a Republican, because I used to be a Democrat. I'm not pushing the party, you make your own mind up. But I used to be a Democrat. When I moved to California, I started hating white people. And we hate white people, you have to be a Democrat. <laughs> and so I was a Democrat because I hated white people. And, and when I was a Democrat, I didn't care about anything. Once I became a Democrat, all my little values went out the window. Anything goes, you can have abortion, you can do whatever you want. And, um, but then when God changed my heart, took away the anger and gave me perfect peace and my values changed, right? So I read both parties. I went and looked at because there was only one other Republican that I ever heard of and she was a singer. She died now, I think she did. Mahalia Jackson or somebody like that. And everybody hated her because she was a Republican and she was black. We thought she was a sellout. So I read the platform and the platform on the Democratic side go against God. They for abortion, they for everything that's wrong, right? And then I read the, Demo the Republican platform, it was about God, family, constitution, freedom and stuff. And so I went back and I, I asked God, I said, you know what? God, I have one more favor, right? He's like, well, what is it? I said that I was a Democrat, you forgave me. I mean, I was uh, full of hate, you forgave me. Now I'm free, I can see. Can you forgive me for being a Democrat? And God, like, yeah, I forgive you. I haven't asked for anything since then. So He forgave me, and I became a Republican because of the platform. Right? It was it it coincided with my values now. But now the millennials, not all, but they think that they could be a Republican conservative and yet be a, a homosexual or something, and that's crazy to me. And they think that you're not supposed to say anything about it because they are supporting the Republican Party, right? So it's like somebody give you a free gift and now you can't speak up. You know what I'm saying? It's because they gave you something, now you're subject to them. And, but I said, you can't be, there's no such thing as it. What did I say? Uh, gay, Christian and gay conservative. Anybody disagree with that? And even that woman, Tamar Bruce, 
came out and said something about it. And she's supposed to be a lesbian. <laughs> I've debated Tammy before when she was a Democrat. But I realized those values don't go. And the Republicans are allowing it to happen because they want the older Republicans because they want the votes. They don't care about your soul. They want the votes. They'll let anybody in that will vote Republican. And they don't care about your values. They, at one time they did. They rejected, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but they don't anymore. They'll let the illegal aliens come in, anybody. But your soul is more important. And I don't care that these people are homosexuals or whatever they are, just don't flaunt it as a norm. That's what they're doing in the Democratic Party, right? They're trying to make an app norm be a norm. So my concern is that you could be whatever you want, but you, it's supposed to be embarrassing, so you kind of hide it. <laughs> you don't go out flooding it, right? Talking about my husband and all that. And so I'm sure a lot of them Republicans have issues. They have sin issues as well, but it's not flooded. You know, you're just a conservative with your issues trying to overcome. But now the Republicans are accepting it as though it's a norm. And I'm thinking your soul is more important than voting a Republican Party. You know, you know because if you notice, Everyone, these people who are not born again of God, they may have degrees, they might be politicians, they're unhappy, they don't have peace. They're not getting along with their families, they are insecure, they have doubt, they are weak. Because if you don't believe in God, if you're not born again, you can have all the money and friendships, it is all fake. And that stuff is here today and gone tomorrow, and why you're... Uh, pretending you're so smart, they're feeding you pills and telling you you can smoke pot and you can do this and that. But you got to have the whole thing by being born again, and then you can be a conservative, whatever you want. But you want your soul to be at peace because you are a spirit. You're not this physical person. And they are mad because I'm saying that you can't be that. You can't be a conservative and be a Christian too, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of millennials are, are mad about that. It's so weird. It's so weird to me, really. But it's interesting. All right. Any questions or anything? Yes, sir. So I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Because yeah. I've been thinking about this the entire week because of that event at Ohio State. And it's, it's so weird because not only Turning Point but then all these other conservatives, like the people who are on the Gateway Pundit, all this stuff. Yeah. They're calling people who asked how that's conservative, they're calling them homophobic. Then they talk about demographics, which is something you talk about, and then they called them racist. Yeah. And then Amazing. they ask, I mean, a few of them were trolls, but one of them is like a, a normal old question about Israel, and they're already anti Semitic. And yeah. it's like their entire platform is supposed to be pro first amendment and look at the liberals doing all this but what yeah. i notice is that anyone who is angry and that anger separate you from god i don't care if you're conservative republican pro israel or anti-israel if you have that anger you're going to get mad at the person that disagrees with you and yeah. you're going to try to shut them down because your nature is so weak you can't hear disagreement i was speaking at this church yesterday and this um, black guy was there, there was other black people there, but this older black man was there. And when I started speaking, he got mad at what I was saying because I was saying no such thing as racism, sexism, or no ism. It's either right or wrong, good or evil. And along the way, I said, there's no, I said the worst thing that ever happened to black people was the civil rights movement. It should have never happened. And the host of the event told me that the guy jumped up and ran out of the church. He was so mad. He was like mad at me for saying that. And, and, um, and she ran down the street and asked him to come back. You know, come back. You can talk to him one on one later. Come back. And so I would have let the guy go, really. <laughs> Ain't no way. And I ran down the street at nobody. Um, I used to run down the street and bring my boo back. <laughs> And I was a beta male. <laughs> Anybody ever ran after your boo? <laughs> You're not going to say, huh? You, know, you ran after your boo yet? I 
jogged is different. <laughs> <laughs> different. <laughs> you ran out of your boo? Multiple times. Oh, beta. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and so during the break time, the guy asked me, the black guy came and talked to me about what I had said. And uh, he asked me, why are you saying that the civil rights movement, it was bad? I said, because it was. Black people have not returned. They, they don't have their mindset anymore. They're not free anymore. They're blaming. And I said that the, the uh, so-called civil rights leaders, what they did was they set themselves up as leader of the people. And now you have these people voting for them over and over. It wasn't like that before the civil rights movement. People were free thinkers, right? And you had a right to disagree and agree. We didn't have the same fight that they were trying to shut you down to prevent you from uh, speaking. But that is happening now. And that's why you have to speak anyway. You have a right to be wrong, and you have a right to be right. I was telling them, the guys this morning, that when I was a, even when I was a kid, I always spoke up. I am never letting no one take my, even in my beta days, I would still speak up if it was wrong or if I thought something right or whatever, right? And I remember, remember my aunt, one of my aunt was wrong about something and I was a little kid and she said something that was wrong, I did something. I told her she was wrong for that. She's like, you need to shut up. Your mouth going to get you in trouble one day because I, I, I will not let no one take my freedom of speech away. Really, I just won't. I'll go to jail before I do that. Because if you, know, if you can't express how you feel or what you believe, you have nothing left. It's like giving up your guns. You have nothing, no way of defending yourself. And who are you to tell me what I can and cannot say when you're saying and doing whatever you want? And I can't say no to that? That doesn't make sense to me. And a lot of people are afraid and they are giving into it. And I know that they're afraid because they're afraid of losing something, right? Losing a job or losing this or losing that. That's why you shouldn't let anybody or anything be that important to you that you can't speak up. You're afraid of losing it. It will control you. So you got to, but the only way you're going to become that way, you must be born again. Because when you are born again, overcome that anger. Oh, and by the way, I told that woman that she let, she told me that she had, well, she told me something else. And then she said she loved her kids or something like that. And I said, no, you don't love your kids. Women don't have love. She's like, what? <laughs> the psychologist. I said, they don't have love. Women receive love. And she was a Christian woman, and so she couldn't fight it. She's like, oh, okay. I understand that. Isn't that amazing? But you got to do what you want, but you must be born again. Overcome the mother's nature, return to the father, then you would never know fear again. You would never know it. it would, he would take it away from you. And no matter what the threats you're getting around you, it would never occur to you to be afraid to speak up. Really. It would be like, what do you mean I can't say that? You would know in marriages and family, whatever the situation may be, you would never be afraid to speak up. But you got to overcome that fallen state. You must forgive. All right. That makes sense. All right. Let me just finish here, Dalai. Go ahead. Uh, Are you afraid to speak up? No, and actually, I'm glad you said that. That was the thing that I kind of came to last night. Is like, well, the only real way to actually stop something like this, that's just because these people are like the leaders of conservatism. The only real way to stop it is to speak up. Yeah. And say the truth and let the chips fall as they may because everyone can see it. Yes. It's it's so clear and obvious and I noticed I, that just to add to that I noticed that on TV regular TV now you don't even hear debates about homosexuality yeah they won't have you on if you disagree with them and I noticed that the hosts of these shows are not mentioned in it at all and some of them claim to be Christians I know some of them they say they are Christian they've been born again and yet they won't have you on anymore or they won't debate homosexuality as being wrong. Or if you were on, they'll just stop the segment and go to commercial. <laughs> yeah. They'll talk about white supremacists on those shows. They'll talk about everything but homosexuality. It's like everybody in that world have accepted it as a norm. And that's not good for us. It's not good for a nation to accept wrongdoing as a right. 
Because even in your personal life, if you accept yourself as being wrong as a right, you're going to catch hell in life. You've got to see that you're wrong. As Nick did when he, started, he saw how these people were attacking one man, right? And he questioned it. Well, how come they're attacking him? Some must be wrong. And in that moment, he realized that evil existed. And from realizing that evil existed, he realized that God existed. You've got to question things. Don't let anybody tell you you can't question things. Really. Don't let them tell you that. You, ha you have a right. You even have a right to ask God for things. You know, like if, I used to question God all the time when I didn't know him, right? I'm like, okay, if there's a God, let it rain right there. And he would let it rain. I didn't know you were supposed to question him. You know, how would you know if you don't ask the question? How would you wake up if you don't ask yourself, am I right here or am I wrong? You know what I'm saying?